Hello everyone, Roy Kirkhouse here. Today I would like to color this large, like 20 by 30 inch black and white photo with Marshall photo oils. Um, I call this one Stairway to Heaven because it's a nice beach. We've been there a couple of times. It's good for uh, boogie boarding, surfing, maybe snorkeling, but there's a lot of surfers out there normally. This is in Solana Beach, California. It was printed with a light jet on Fuji Crystal Archive photo paper, matte paper, which is perfect to color these with Marshall photo oils. So let's do this. So let's start with the sky and then go into the ocean with sky blue. So I'll put a little bit on my palette paper and then with a cotton round I'm going to color in the sky. I'm going to use the same color for ocean and sky so then after very being careful here at the horizon. So Marshall photo oils are very transparent oils. They were, as the name says, they were designed for this purpose. And since they're so transparent, you can still see the black and white photo underneath through it. And what happens is, when you put the color on black and white photo like this, it's the, it's the gray values underneath that desaturate your colors. So typically you don't have, you can just work with pure colors normally. And it's the photo that takes care of the saturation. So that means if you want a very bright blue sky, kind of more or less like towards the horizon here. It needs to be very like light gray or even white. That gives you the purest color, the purest hue, if you will. And as you can see here, if we go more up here in the sky, there's more grays, darker grays, and it like desaturates. Not only makes it darker, but it desaturates your color. That applies to any color. So if you want a pure bright red, make sure your the photo underneath, the grays are like very light or white. Go, just going over the edges of the clouds. I'm going to fix that a little bit later. Although I do, don't mind seeing a little bit of blue on the edges of the clouds. And also with the ocean, I don't mind the breaking waves yet, going over that with blue, I will fix that later. And we can do that with Q-tips. This paint removes very easily from this type of paper. And that's kind of how I work, like, like to work. I put it on very roughly as, and I go over the white parts of the waves here, but I'm gonna remove that all later. 
and you can do that either with cotton rounds, which is a little rougher, or with say two tips. See, I could put a little blue here. All right. I would take a clean one and then smooth out. The, the brush strokes. I'm not using using a lot of pressure. Actually, when I put the paint on, I don't use too much pressure either. But I'm doing it even lighter now. And then I think I want it even a little bit lighter towards the horizon here. Let's grab a Q-tip or a cotton swab and now we will remove some of that paint from the clouds. So now I'm pushing quite a bit harder. You can see how easily it removes. So that doesn't work on directly on inkjet paper. Let's grab a clean one. But there are ways to do it on inkjet paper. And that's to first coat it with an acrylic medium. I have some videos on that too. So you can print it your a black and white photo, print it yourself with a ink chat printer, code it, and then paint it with Marshall photo oils. Grab a new one, and let's work on the waves. You can see you can normally do that with big soups here. Uh, nice and narrow. Just one swipe with a cotton wound will take care of that. Maybe remove it a little bit from the surface of the water here, but not too much, just to give it some some reflection. Okay, 
There we go. Let's grab some burnt sienna now. Again, clean cotton round. And let's start here on the bluff. They are so translucent, you don't have to worry about details. As you can see, you're just going over a lot of stuff. You don't have to go around all these little things, little plants. I like to put the color on relatively thick. And then later, I'm going to, going to introduce some variations in thickness by just going over it again with a clean cotton round and remove a little bit. Be a little bit careful closer to the sky here. I'll add some green in these parts later. Let's move on to the more of the beach. So the railing is always the hardest part of this photo when I color this one. Because I have to remove a lot of, those, of that color from the railing. But it's easier to, to just go over it and then remove it later than to try to not go over it. Usually that takes me longer. Although, of course, I'm going to leave it untouched now, the railing, but say if I wanted to add a color to that, then I indeed would have to be very careful. Probably just use Q-tips to color the fence. But in this case, we only have to remove, I'm just going to remove it at places where I don't want the paint. All right, let's turn this around. These paints last a long time. I probably have some of these tubes several years. I think I got all the oh no here. Okay, so now that all that color is applied. I'm going to remove it, not completely, but certain amount where I want 
some different values. That gives it a much more realism. Doesn't look as flat when there's the same color everywhere. I mean, it's still the same color, but like I said, you have different values of it everywhere now. This gives the beach a very nice light tone. You just already see this already looks a little bit better than. Oops, I went through my paint over here, but we'll fix that. To be a little lighter and then let's have a little bit more in the foreground and then maybe add a little bit more here and there Brick wall. Then before I start removing the color of the railing, let's do the green first, because we'll have to remove that too. This is oxide green. I'm actually running out of this color, but again, it's paint, so you can just mix blue and yellow to get green if you run out of it. And later, probably what I'll do, I'll add a little bit of yellow here and there in, in the greens, which also gives it a slight variation in the, in the, in the color itself, not, not just in the value when I remove certain amounts of paint here and there. I guess I'll just do the whole thing here, including railing. There we 
I still have some greens to do up here. And then let's grab a clean Q-tip and just add some greens in the smaller parts here. The areas that are too small to use a cotton round. All these little plants. Again, let's grab a clean one and then remove some of the greens just lightly and again get some variation and some of these spots I would like to go over with yellow as I mentioned earlier Let's see this all looks good I'm going to do that with a Q-tip. So let's grab some yellow now. So it's cadmium yellow. Not a clean cotton round. Just pick up a very little bit. And we'll add some yellow on top of the green. So it kind of mixes. So you can mix to a certain extent on your photo itself. It's a little easier to mix paints though with these on the, on the palette. But if I don't go too crazy you can see it doesn't really remove, if I'm careful it doesn't really remove the paint that's already there, the greens in this case. Right, looks good. So now we get to the part where we have to remove all the colors from, from the railing. Oh wait, before I do that, let's add that burnt sienna to this lifeguard tower here. So this area is called Tide Park or Tabletops, as the surface call it, because there's a reef back here. You can see the waves are breaking very far out in the ocean, and normally you, you'll find a lot of surface there. There were none here today, this, this day. So you have stayed away from the edges. In order not to mess up the, 
the ocean. So now I take a Q-tip, take not too much, and then go next to the edges with a Q-tip to add that burnt sienna. And then again, I take a clean one and tone it down a little bit. Okay, now we're ready to remove some of that paint especially off the railing, let's see, maybe off the stairs here too. So this photo is mounted on a backboard. It's not exactly foam core, it's not exactly gator, it's something in between, but it's sturdy enough so you can push hard enough. You do want a little bit of a sturdy background in order not to push it, dent the photo. So I'm kind of turning each time with a new swipe, taking a clean part of the Q-tip, and then when that's all dirty, flip it around. This is normally the part that takes really the longest. It's taking care of the details by removing paint. And the funny, th well, I'm not sure it's funny, but when a piece like that is finished and people look at it, think, okay, yeah, it's a nice technique and all. Or, or most people don't realize that a lot of work goes into like removing paint. So you can see how this looks nice and bright. You have to go all around it. It's kind of like neg negative coloring, or I don't know what you would call that. Like taking care of negative space. Okay, time for clean new one. So Marshall Photo Oils comes also with certain solutions. Marlene solution or PM solution. And you can use those to remove paint more easily, but it leaves you very sharp edges. So I hardly use it. And if you have the, the right paper like this, or like when I mentioned acrylic coating on inkjet paper, this will do. You can, you can remove paint well enough just by going over it with clean Q-tips and cotton rounds. See what a big difference that makes. All cleaned up. I also color on canvas with either 
thinned oils, the regular oils that I thin with liquid or acrylics that I thin with acrylic medium. But that's, a, that's even a little hard because then it sticks to the canvas pretty much immediately. And then, so in that case, you do have to go careful around all this. I have done this also on canvas, this piece. But that's a different approach. Then you cannot remove the paint like I'm doing now. And the last thing to do is add a little bit of aquamarine in the ocean here. And then I th think we're done. Let's do that with a Q-tip. See this breaking wave here. Just to add a little bit of variation here and there. So it's not just all one color. And here we go, it's all done. So you have a black and white photo printed on light chat matte Fuji Crystal Archive photo paper colored with Marshall photo oils. So I hope you liked the video. Please hit that like button, subscribe to my channel. And I will see you next time.